Hey everyone, in this video we are going to learn about glycerophosphate shuttle. And as I mentioned in my previous video that NADH is also generated in the cytosol through glycolysis pathway. And if this NADH is not oxidized to regenerate NAD+, the glycolytic pathway could cease to function. Therefore, it is important that NAD+, must be regenerated for glycolysis to continue and to regenerate NAD+, NADH must be oxidized. Now, as I mentioned that there are basically two ways for NADH to be oxidized. One is anaerobic pathway where pyruvate is converted into lactate and during the reaction NADH is oxidized into NAD plus and NAD plus is then used in the glycolysis pathway. Now second condition is the aerobic condition during which NADH is oxidized through respiratory chain or electron transport chain. However, the only problem is both NADH and NAD plus cannot cross the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Therefore, to resolve this issue, basically electrons from NADH are carried across the mitochondrial membrane instead of NADH itself. And in glycerophosphate shuttle, basically when you have NADH which are carrying electrons in the cytosol, NADH is first oxidized into NAD plus in the cytosol and the electrons are then transported across the mitochondrial membrane and these electrons are then passed on to FAD in the mitochondria which is then reduced to FADH2 and this FAD FADH2 is then enters into or give up its electron into electron transport chain to synthesize ATP. So the question is how is this cytoplasmic NADH oxidized into mitochondria to synthesize ATP through glycerophosphate shuttle. So as I mentioned in my first video that electrons from cytoplasmic NADH are enter into mitochondria through shuttles and one shuttle we already talked about is the mallet aspartate shuttle. In mallet aspartate shuttle, NADH from the cytosol which is generated through glycolysis process and through mallet aspartate shuttle, NADH is regenerated in the mitochondria and in the mitochondria, NADH gives up its ele electrons to respiratory chain to synthesize ATP. And because it is NADH, one NADH synthesizes two molecules of ATP. And it is heavily operated in the heart, liver, and kidneys. Second shuttle is the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. This is what I'm going to talk about today. In glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, electrons from NADH are transferred to FAD in the mitochondria. And FAD is then reduced to FADH2. And FADH2 then gives up its electrons to respiratory chain to synthesize 1.5 molecules of ATP and glycerol 3 phosphate shuttles operates heavily in the skeletal muscle and brain. So this is basically the big difference between two shuttles. In mallet aspartate shuttle, electrons from NADH are transferred to NAD plus in the mitochondria, which is then which is then reduced into NADH and synthesizes 2.5 molecules of ATP. Whereas in glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle, electrons from FADH2 are transferred to FAD which is then reduced to FADH2 and synthesizes 1.5 molecules of ATP. Now let's talk about how NADH is oxidized through glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. So here we have NADH which is generated in the glycolysis pathway. So electrons from NADH are first transferred to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and this is this is actually an intermediate in the glycolysis pathway. And when the electrons from NADH are passed on to dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it is reduced to glycerol 3 phosphate. And during the reaction, NADH is oxidized to NAD, and this NAD then can be used in the glycolysis pathway. And this reaction is carried out by cytosolic enzyme, which is called glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. And once the glycerol 3 phosphate is synthesized, it is then oxidized to dihydroxyacetone phosphate with the help of enzyme glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase which is a mitochondrial enzyme and this enzyme is basically present in the outer surface of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And the reaction also regenerates dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And most importantly, electrons from glycerol 3-phosphate are then passed on to FAD. And when electrons are passed on to FAD, FAD is then reduced to FADH2. And finally, FADH2 then pass these electrons to electron carrier Q, which is then reduced to QH2. And electrons from QH2 then transfer 
equal to complex 3, then cytochrome C, and then complex 4. And finally, the electrons are then transferred to the final electron acceptor, that is oxygen. And during this process, protons are then pumped out from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. And then these protons pass through complex 5, which is also called as ATP synthase enzyme, to phosphorylate ADP to synthesize ATP. So this is basically the overview of glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. So most important thing to remember in this shuttle is that the electrons are passed on to FAD. Now I just want to quickly talk about the comparison and the difference between malad aspartate shuttle and glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. Now both shuttles allow the transfer of electrons from cytosolic NADH into the mitochondria for synthesis of ATP. It also regenerates NAD plus for glycoly glycolysis pathway to continue. Now, malate aspartate shuttle uses cytosolic and mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase and, um, and aspartate aminotransferase enzyme, whereas glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle uses cytosolic and mitochondrial glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. And most importantly, in malate aspartate shuttle, electrons from cytosolic NADH are passed on to NAD plus in the mitochondria, which then reduces to NADH in the mitochondria. So basically, it regenerates NADH in the mitochondria. And then the electrons from NADH are then transferred to electron transport chain to synthesize ATP. And malate aspartate shuttle synthesizes 2.5 molecules of ATP. Whereas in glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle, electrons from cytosolic NADH are passed on to FAD in the mitochondria, and then FAD is reduced to FADH2. And then FADH2 gives up it, it electrons to electron transport chain and synthesizes 1.5 molecules of ATP. Now, malate aspartate shuttle is more efficient because it synthesizes 2.5 molecules of ATP, whereas glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle is less efficient because it synthesizes less molecules of ATP compared to malate aspartate shuttle. Now, malate aspartate shuttle is mainly used in high energy demand tissues such as heart, liver, and kidneys, whereas glycerol 3 phosphate is used in low energy demand tissues such as skeletal muscle and brain. So I really hope that you learn something new from this video and if you do so please like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon next time.